Hello, welcome back to Not Fake News. We got a break in, two breaking stories here that you're going to need to hear. The first one, boom. Muslims chant Allahu Akbar on plane or Allah on plane. Flight attendant has a brilliant response. Delta Airlines is being sued by Muslim couple whining about how they were treated. But the brave flight attendant did her job right by putting passengers before sensibilities. The Cincinnati, Ohio Muslim couple chanted Allah while hiding their cell phones from view. This behavior uh, obviously caught the highly trained flight attendant's attention and made her very uncomfortable, as probably as the rest of the people that were on the plane as well. For the sake of the safety of both passengers and the crew, she urged the pilot to have them removed from the airplane. I don't know. You tell us. They didn't tell us anything. We're going to ask that you step off the aircraft. What are your plans? Why is that? Hmm? Oh, because they're requesting you. Is it a discriminatory decision, or is it because, the, uh, well, what is the reason? Is it is a safety of flight issue. Seriously? That's all that there is. The Delta flight attendant said every time she walked by the couple from Cincinnati, they were texting rather covertly on their phones. Hmm. Okay. The Muslim man and woman also appeared to be sweating profusely, according to the Delta staffer. The couple blamed their perspiration on long boarding weight at the tarmac. Everyone else on the plane was forced to deal with the same weight. The other passengers were dry. Oh, I'm sorry. The other passengers were also subjected to the same poor air circulation on the plane. But they did not have beads of sweat running down their face as if they were about to do something bad or they were really nervous. I was scared I was scared because it looked like some random guy was taking pictures of our passports on his personal phone, said Nazi Ali, the Muslim woman from Cincinnati, after she heard uh, after she and her husband f facely falsely or or face, I'll, I don't know, were kicked off the plane. <coughs> oh, his, name, his husband's name is Fasal. Were kicked off, the, her and her husband were kicked off the plane. Once back on solid ground, police officers reviewed the Muslim couple's passport and read the text that they were sending from the phone. Ooh, the viral video of the o Ohio Muslims being kicked off the plane illustrates how polite professionalism and calm the flight attendant was while trying to handle the situation. The couple, on the other hand, immediately became combative. I thought that, but didn't mention it. It took only seconds for the two passengers to claim they were being discriminated against. If actual ISIS or Al-Qaeda terrorists were on the plane besides them and behaving suspiciously, the Cincinnati couple could have become victims themselves and a flight attendant had worried about political correctness. Mm. If a few moments have of uncomfortable inconvenience keeps radical Islamic jihadists from flying over American soil, so be it. Flight attendants should never be worried about hurt feelings or lawsuits when trying to determine if passengers could pose a threat to the airplane. I say that all the time. And I said that when they said, oh, they, put, they held those people and wouldn't let them into the country. They detained them. So they were detained a few hours, and then they were all let in. So relax. Liberal politicians cannot continue to urge Americans to adhere to the, to the see something, say something reporting policy to help thwart terrorism and then bash folks when they actually do it. The Delta flight attendant was not being racist or Islamophobic. She was doing her job and behaving like a true patriot. Click here on the Daily Trump email. Do you think that the flight attendant was right for having them removed from the plane? Please share below and let us know what you think. Also share this on Facebook and Twitter. Our next story. Trump meets Congress tomorrow, set to give most important speech to deliver on his promise. By Trenton Paul. 
Since taking the oath of office, President Trump has hit the ground running with executive orders, policy pushes, and now he's gearing up to address the Congress. Tomorrow, tr today actually, um, Trump will give a speech to members of Congress in regards to his plan for fulfilling the promises he made to the American people during the campaign. Just one month into his pres presidency, Trump is taking his pledge to fix America very seriously. When, I, when they say tomorrow, this came out yesterday, today is uh, Tuesday, and he's going to be um, doing this today or tonight. By addressing Congress, President Trump is pushing his agenda further in the direction he believes America needs. In the past, not all of the Republican leadership has backed Trump's plan for the future of America. But that hasn't held him back from moving forward with his agenda for the people who put him in office. As executive branch in, of our government, Trump hopes to find common ground with Congress and work on fulfilling their promises together. His speech on today, his speech on Tuesday, is just the first step in making that possible. President Trump seems to be getting a lot of support from his supporters in Washington. It's easily the most important speech of his young presidency, said Alex Conant who worked for Senator Marco Rubio's campaign in 2016 primaries and supported Trump in the general election. So far, he has spoken a lot to his base, but he's not spoken publicly to Congress, and he has put very little pressure on them. Another Trump supporter, John Freehe, who is also a former Republican aide to Capitol Hill, says the President's move on Congress is important and is coming at the perfect time. The president needs to make a bold and stark case for his legislative agenda. He shouldn't play nice or expect to get a favorable reception. This is his chance to tell the American people to lobby the Congress on his behalf, and he shouldn't mince words, for here he told The Hill in an interview. During the election, then-candidate Trump and Speaker Paul Ryan found themselves at odds on a few issues. During the final weeks of the election, Ryan refused to campaign for Trump and also lacked enthusiasm when speaking to others, members of the House, in regards to Trump's campaign. I know that's what, why I had a problem with him for a while. Now that Trump is president, Speaker Ryan has begun backing him on policies, even if they don't agree completely. Ryan has said that he will keep Congress on board with Trump's strict immigration plans but was not too clear when asked about his support for Trump's proposal, a uh, proposed border wall. <coughs> Pardon me. Congress is committed to securing the border and enforcing our laws. And together, with Trump's administration, we will get this done, said Ryan. At the annual Conservation Political Action Conference on CPAC last week, where we have videos on all, everyone who spoke, we have Clark, Sheriff Clark's video, Pence is uh, Vice President Pence, um, Bannon and Priebus and Trump, all of those videos we we did. Uh, during his speech, a member of the crowd shouted at him, "Build the wall," which which was the first thing that actually when he it was right away when it happened, which prompted President to confirm the wall is on track, being built. In fact, it's going to start soon, and I just did a video today how it is starting already. Like practically, the, the first steps were taken. Way ahead of schedule, said Trump. So what exactly is included in Trump's promises for his campaign? Republican leaders have made repealing Obamacare a high priority since it passed on Christmas Eve in 2009. During his campaign, Trump joined the bandwagon and promised the repeal of Obamacare. If he were elected, now that he is in office and already taking, uh, talking about his run for re-election in 2020, POTUS is ready to follow through on its promise by repealing and replacing the uh, ACA, the Affordable Care Act. Oh, man, that is like such a bad name for that. See how they, they always do and say the opposite of what they really are? And that group called CARE, C-A-I-I-R, um, it sounds so nice, right? Bunch of crooks. Anyway, the Trump administration and Congress are currently working separately on plans that may replace Obamacare. Trump aims to bring their forces together and tackle the repeal as a team.
other than repeal the ACA, Affordable Care Act, and building the wall along the border with Mexico, Trump has also vowed to improve our security nationwide. Although his first executive order, which temporarily banned travel to the United States from seven Muslim majority countries, was overturned by a federal judge, he is now working on a revised plan that will be clearer and possibly even safer for American citizens. President Trump is also taking on the America's deficit. He plans to cut certain funding and move other funds around, which will enable the government to save money on fr frivolous things and ultimately cut our deficit. The Trump administration is working on a plan to make this happen, but with support from Congress, the task would be much easier. Vice President Mike Pence, who is a six-term congressman and is also going to play a vital role in Trump's path towards fulfilling his promises, by having Pence at his counterpart, President Trump is able to know the rules of the game while working out the details of the plan, of his plans. Pence will also come in handy if there are ever any disagreements from Congress, as he will be able to assist President Trump in staying one step ahead on issues he wants to resolve. What kind of effects would any resistance have on Trump's term as president? Although many GOP leaders have shown signs of discord in the past, they all know there is still a common goal to take back America. If Congress were to, for any reason, try to delay or overrule any beneficial decisions Trump makes for the greater good, it would essentially be a waste of time. The first two years of Trump's term are the most important. One of the main reasons he is wasting no time addressing Congress is so that they can make important and necessary changes before the 2018 election season. By joining forces, the GOP could also, would also be putting themselves in a prime position to gain even more seats in the House in 2018. Currently, Republicans hold 238 seats in the House and 52 seats in the Senate, the highest majority the party has ever held. Why would the GOP risk losing all of that instead of working together? Tomorrow, as President Trump speaks to the 115th Congress, he will know exactly what kind of impact the first two years of his term will hold. By kicking off his fulfillment agenda well within the first 100 days of office, President Trump is showing the American people how important this country is, uh, this country, and its citizens are to him. We can only hope Congress receives him well and fights alongside with him to make America great again. That was a, a good one. And next story, Iran plans, Iran deploys Navy to sea despite U.S. notice tensions as Iran destroys Phil Hormuz. Actually, no, that's another video. That's why it felt like a long time. We did this and we did this. Okay. So we are done with the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll be making that video in a minute. The other two we got, if you I might as well show you what we have for the next one. We have Iran deploys Navy to sea despite U.S. notice. Tensions high as Iran destroys Phil. The Hormuz. Look at this. Look. And then the next ad we have on that video will be Vets learn of Warren's latest commitments blast her supporting illegals over military members so yeah we got a lot to go over thank you for watching once again if you uh what you want to do is uh, share this get this out there on facebook and twitter and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notifications of the stories as they break and come in and if you like what we're doing here at not fake news and you want to help fight the fight and like you are doing by watching the video, please like the video. It's very important and it means a lot to us. Thank you, and I'll see you next time at your real news source, not fake news.